I thought it might be interesting to do a data structures and algorithm series, partly to do the data structures and also partly just to show how you would implement a lot of these features in Odin. To start out the series, we're going to do a singly linked list, and we get to see several features right out of the gate that Odin offers. One of them we get to use is the WHERE clause, which is a compile time constraint that we can apply to our procedures. Another is generic structs. And lastly, we can look at the container of procedure, which allows you to jump up into a containing struct. I figure I can start with a quick diagram of how singly linked lists work, and then we can go in and implement the code for it. The first kind of linked list we'll look at is a parametric linked list. The node and the data are in the same struct. A, B, and C are inside there. A is the head in this case. The node contains both the data field, which is of type T, and the next field to the next node. Next, we have an intrusive linked list. In this case, the nodes only link to each other, and they're contained inside of another struct. So we have to use the container of feature in order to jump out of the link and up into the data. Starting out, we're going to pull the core intrinsics package, which has most of the compile time constraints in it. And I'm going to alias off the has field from intrinsics.type as field, just so it's easier to see in the code. We start out by making our node, and we want it to be a generic struct. So generic structs have parentheses on them, and then the type is T, and it is a type ID. Inside of it, the next pointer is to another struct of the same type of T, and then the data field is also of type T. Next, we're going to set up a helper function for make node, and it's Odin convention that any allocating function is passed in an allocator argument, and it's defaulted to context.allocator unless there's a dedicated allocator for it. This allows users to see that this procedure allocates Next, we do the insert procedure, and what we want to do is we want to take in the head of the list and the node that we want to put at the head, and because it's a generic with type T, we need to make sure that the type that's coming in where T has the field next. Any struct that's passed into this function that doesn't have that field would be rejected, and this guarantees that we should at least compile inside there. We're going to first set the next pointer to null, and this is guarding for when we use free lists in the future. Then, if the head is not empty, we go ahead and set our next pointer to be the head, and then we place ourselves at the head. Next, we can do the append procedure, and it's a very simple procedure that just sticks our node on the end of the list. Next, we'll add the remove procedure, and the idea here is that we're going to pop the top node off the singly linked list off the list and we're going to return it and then put the next node at the head. We do this by first making sure that there is a node on the list and then we take it and place it in the value term. We then set the head to be the next value and again we're going to guard that the next pointer is nil and this also is another issue when you're coming on and off of free lists. The very tail node can sometimes have that issue. Lastly, we're going to do a destroy procedure. And the objective with this one is that we're going to take in the head of the list and we'll traverse down the list, deallocating each node as we go. Notice that this one also takes an allocator. And the reason for that is that the free procedure needs to have the same allocator that the new procedure used. And so, we're enabling the ability to pass it in. I've got it defaulted to also pick up the context. However, if you switched the context somewhere between new and free, that would be an error. Note that on Windows, if you were to do a double free here, the, the operating system will silently fail, but it will not throw an error in that error field, and it will not actually error on the program either. However, on Linux, it will segfault for you, and so you have some notice that you did a double free or other bad memory access. Now that we have all of our helpers in place, we're going to go ahead and set up a node to be the head. And I've typed it to be type int, and you notice it's almost like a procedure call. However, that is still just a generic struct. And we'll go ahead and insert a few elements onto the list. So 
42, 13, and 7, just some random things. And now I can set up a loop to go iterate down the list, and we can print them out to the console. Just to showcase the destroy function, I go ahead and add it, and we place it before the end just to show that we are actually able to deallocate everything without crashing. Next, we'll go to the intrusive linked list. It's a much simpler structure in that all it is is a next pointer. I'm creating a data struct, and this would just be something that contains the node. So the key here is that node link, and you can use whatever name you want, is inside the struct. It could be a pointer if you want, or it could be a direct value. Given that this is so light, I figure it's better to have it just be a direct value. Data could be anything else that you want. In this case, I'm just keeping it really simple. We're going to create an insert data procedure tailored to our structure here. And similar to our parametric linked list, this procedure just creates a new data structure. It sets the value and then it attaches it to the head, just like the other one. Notice that I add the using statement and this allows us to just directly call next. We do want to keep the node statement because we need it for deallocations and things like that. So you don't want to use the underscore. Next, I wanted to use a find procedure. And this is just showing you how you would actually use the intrusive list in practice. Ordinarily, you're looking at it and you don't see a way to get back to your containing structures. And what we're going to use is a procedure called container of. And all that does is it looks at that struct and it looks at the parent and which field we are, in this case it's node, and sets the pointer offset into the parent and then casts it to that parent for us. From there, we can iterate through the list. If it matches, we go ahead and return the struct. Otherwise, we'll just return nil. We could do a multiple return here, but I chose to just keep it simple. Now that we have that built, we can go ahead and do the same as the other linked list, where we're going to insert the same values. And now we can go ahead and find the middle value in that list. So there we have it. We have both intrusive and parametric linguists. I hope you found this useful, and we'll see you next time.